All right, class, we're back. And I wanted to go over a couple things we've been talking in class about lately, specifically knob and tube. Now we discussed it a good bit the other day and you guys expressed that most of you had never seen knob and tube, didn't even know what it looked like. So in this house, we have a good bit of knob and tube, and this is what it looks like. You have just conductors running alone, not in a jacket, not in a cable assembly, and spliced off of whenever necessary to go to another location. So let's go back here and we'll take a look and follow one so you get an idea of why some people find it difficult to deal with knob and tube. Now this was probably a fuse box at one point and it got gutted and they refed it with multi-wire branch circuits. We have a three conductor wire coming in. We have a red, a black, and a white. The white is our neutral. Um, and then we have a red circuit and a black circuit, so they share a neutral. That makes it a multi-wire branch circuit. It comes back over and down into our panel. Now, multi-wire branch circuits, you can see here's a red, here's a black, red, black. These are our ungrounded conductors, and per code, we would prefer that the black and the red or each conductor from the same assembly cable assembly like this one the red and black from this cable should be on a two pole breaker or two breakers with a handle tie so that if one trips both circuits trip and that would keep us from leaving a loaded neutral somewhere else in the house which can be dangerous Okay, but we're not really talking about that in class right now. Like, you know what, while we're here looking at this panel, you might notice there's no single main breaker, right? It looks like a main lug only panel because we just have two lugs. Now, if we walk off to the left here and look up, let me see if you can notice. That's just a meter socket. There's no disconnect up there. So, how do we have what appears to be a main lug only panel with no main breaker? Well, what we have here is a panel that was installed prior to 1984. And before then, there's a section in the code that describes uh, six motions of the hand or six movements of the hand for disconnect purposes. And this is one of those situations right here that would apply to that code. Now we'll talk about that in class further, uh, what code section, etc. But, so what we have here is, now this is hot, so I'm not gonna touch it of course, but we have our 240 coming in and it feeds these top six breakers. So to shut off this entire panel per code, we have a main, a main, 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 and a couple more here. But this is called a split bus panel. There's two bus bars in here. There's one for the top for our disconnects. And then the other half comes off of this main lighting breaker. This breaker, if you see these copper conductors, they're hard to follow, but they go up and back down both sides and they energize from here down. So if I turn this breaker off, I'm going to de-energize this entire half of the panel. And that's code compliant because you could turn these off with six movements of the hand per NEC code. Now this got discontinued in the 80s. It was really popular in the, I would say the 50s to 70s, but I think it was around 84. Uh, they were discontinued, no longer used main breakers became more prevalent but this is an example of one you don't see them all the time but they do exist so here's one all right 
back to knob and tube. Now, if we come over here to what used to be a fuse panel with the old screw-in fuses, uh, it got gutted, rewired, and what we have here is our knob and tube coming in. You can see it here. And it's spliced into our home runs coming from the panel. Now, if we just choose one of these and follow it, you'll see how much they get spliced off of and how it can get confusing. The first thing you'll notice that is that they're all the same color. They're just a drab, brownish gray, black, whatever. Um, but yeah, just by looking at this, you can't tell if it's a neutral or a grounded conductor or an ungrounded conductor or a hot we don't know. We can't tell by looking. So we'll come over here and let's just follow, I don't know, this guy. Let's follow this guy right here. It's coming out of this connector right here. It was the second one. It goes up through and into that porcelain insulator. That keeps it away from the wood. And then it's coming down this way. Let me turn the camera. Another porcelain insulator. Looks like there's a splice there. Keeps coming to another porcelain insulator. Right there. And right here it gets tapped already. We have a splice. And one neutral is going this way. The other neutral is going in this direction. And when they bored through the joist, they would put the porcelain sleeve in and run the conductor through. This is just a neutral. And now it's going this way, keeps going, and then let's see, I forget which wire we were on, hopefully you guys are paying attention. Either way, there's another splice. We come this way, we have more, more splices, more porcelains, another splice here. It continues on, and then we get to this funny looking connector here. And that is a terminal end where they went to a two wire cloth uh, paper jacketed cable assembly. And now you can see it's tapped in and we have a hot and a neutral. We have a white, we have a black. It's just soldered together. But you can see how easy it is to lose track of where you are and what you're even looking at. Without a tester, and without kind of understanding how they used to tap this stuff, it's very easy to cut one wire and affect the entire house sometimes. These splices will be in the wall, they'll be hidden, you won't know they're there. So you have to take your time and be careful with knob and tube if you're working with it. Okay? Here, here's something interesting, old knife switch. That's pretty cool, actually. You just pull it down. Flip it to the other side. That makes connection. There's actually another one right over here. Another knife switch. It's in the off position. Or not making contact at least. Doesn't look like it goes anywhere. As you can see this side, there's no terminal coming off of the other side. But knob and tube. Split bus panel. All things will cover in code and also things that are fun to learn about, but sometimes stressful to work on. There's a nice example of how they used to wrap around the porcelain to keep it in place. They would just hammer these down. You can see the nail end, hammer it down on the connector or on the conductor. Here they have an extra protective sleeve over the conductor right there. That's all that is. It's just a sleeve the conductor goes through, helps protect the wire. Other areas, they didn't put anything on them at all. They just go from porcelain to porcelain and then up into the wall. All right, so if you guys have any questions in class after watching this video, bring them up. Here's a cool connector, look at this. It went from MC, well that would be AC, that's armored cable, into this connector. And here we have a splice, another splice. Look at all that. See? It's pretty neat, huh? But it can be difficult to work on. Take your time. Enjoy the process. It helps if you find the ground. Use your meters. 
use your multimeters, use your testers. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys in class.